Oh man. Okay. This was super helpful. Thank you, Samuel. Legitimately. I'm not, so like, helpful. I don't understand any of this stuff. And so I think I'm not alone and I hope that this will be helpful to anyone out there who is maybe apprehensive um, or, you know, who has people in their life that are apprehensive and that you want to get the vaccine. There are a lot of people in my life that I love that I want to get the vaccine as quickly as possible. And so sure. um, hopefully this will be helpful if, like me, you have blocked out of your memory high school biology because I was bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like being bad at things, Samuel. I don't know if you've noticed this about me. So. No, well, you're good at so many things. But you're doing great. <laughs> well, it's because I choose to only do the things I'm good at. But Hey, welcome back to Antisocial Studies. I'm Emily Glankler. This is part two in Emily Learns About Vaccines with Samuel. So Samuel, just for anyone who's joining us in part two, like a crazy person, do you want to tell them who you are? Uh, yes, I am Samuel Griffin. I have uh, been teaching uh, high school sciences for 13 years now, uh, seven years at the, uh, our current job at Griffin School. In the past two, we've been working uh, past couple, is it two or three? Three. Three years, mm -hmm. yes. Um, time is weird. It, yeah. Time flies uh, been... <laughs> when you're working with me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, and Samuel is my go-to science person. Like, just if I, if I, it's, that's one of the reasons I love teaching at a high school is that I'm surrounded by experts. And so when, when people were talking about the pandemic in February and March, um, that, you know, I just, I just sat by Samuel at lunch and listened to what you were saying. So, um, so now we're here again. And I want you to explain to me two things. At some point, I want to know what herd immunity is because I, it's it's like it's like um, inflation in economics. It's a thing that can be explained to me thirty times, and I still will never quite understand it. And then also, just what is this these COVID vaccines that are coming out, and and what should we be thinking about them? So, sure, sure, happy, happy to. <laughs> um, so, um, can can I share my screen? I'm going to do some excellent drawings. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, yes, yes. So yeah. you and I need to teach a class together because I do this too. I draw ridiculous things on the whiteboard of like, let's look at a triangle. That's France. Okay, France is the triangle. And then yeah. I'm like, it's it's a mess. Okay. Just draw a shape and then write in France. It's obviously France. It's France. And it's a hierarchy. Yeah, it's and we get it. it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I made you the host. Okay, so um, I'll introduce uh, the concept of herd immunity first. So um, in our herd, in our community, we we have some people who are immunocompromised, who who are unable for for a variety of reasons, uh, autoimmune disease, um, uh, battling cancer or having beaten cancer, um, are and several other things. And so herd immunity is the concept that it's kind of like putting enough barriers of people who just can't get it, won't carry it, sort of thing, in between the contact of uh, people who can't uh, uh, can't get the vaccine. And so mm -hmm. if building up herd immunity is, is all about um, having enough people where the virus just can't take hold in any community and be spread to those who are more vulnerable. Okay. Um, so once we get enough people who are vaccinated, who won't carry the disease or won't be infected by the disease, then, uh, then there's far less chances of those who are unable to be vaccinated who are more at risk of just getting sick with anything yeah. not just covid um okay that makes to protect them that makes way more sense because and, and i think this is then an important message which is that i because i have heard a lot of people being like well i don't know when i'm gonna be able to get vaccinated i guess i'll just wait on i guess i'll just trust the herd immunity but it's like no 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 <laughs> The peop anyone who is able, like medically capable, physically capable of getting the vaccine needs to be a part of creating that herd immunity so we can save right. those like precious spots of unvaccinated for the people who just physically can't get it. That's right. Perfect. That's exactly that makes right. total sense. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's, it's a compassionate thing. You know, that's, that's, you know, it's sort of like whenever you're wearing a mask, you're not just doing it to protect yourself. It's also to protect those people who don't know you, who don't know what your pr protocols have been or, you know, who you've had contact with. And so, you know, her, building herd immunity through vaccination, especially, is, is definitely a compassionate way to go. And that's why, you know, it didn't work out 
uh, in the countries that tried it otherwise, because it's kind of, without a vaccine, you're just kind of being like, well, some people are going to die. Yeah. And, uh, and me personally, I, that's, that's a difficult mindset to be in. Yeah, I'm not for that mindset. I think we both agree yeah. on that. So yeah. we're, we're anti-death <laughs> here at Emily Learns About. Anti-death, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so what what's what's with these COVID vaccines? There's more than one. Are they yes. di- they're different? Should some people get one or the other? What's going right. on? Um, they, they're both working uh, through the same mechanism, and, and that's from mRNA. And so... Now you get to see my mm. beautiful drawing. I'm so, so excited. Um, first of all, let's let's t- talk a little bit about the differences between DNA and uh, RNA. Oh no! Oh no! It's, it, this is going to be very very I'm very brief. Flashbacks right? to my high school, my freshman biology class, which I really struggled in. Okay. Well, DNA is found on found on the inside of in in, in your nucleus. Okay. The nucleus is uh, where all of your genetic information is stored. And every single cell in your body that has a nucleus contains all of the information to make an Emily, to make a Samuel, to make anybody uh, anybody that you want, right? Um, RNA is – so DNA is just exists. RNA has to be, to be produced from DNA. Okay. And the type of RNA that we're going to be talking about is messenger RNA, mm-hmm. and that is created in the nucleus – and then it travels to what's called a ribosome. And that's as far as I'm going to go with it. I There's remember these words, yes. Transfer RNA, which transfers uh, the, the building of a protein. And then you also have ribosomal RNA, which is the structural unit that just creates a ribosome. It's kind of like the brick that is uh, the, the house of the ribosome. Okay. So DNA has the letters... Uh, A, T, G, and C for their its base pairs. This is adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And messenger RNA has uh, adenine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine. And that's as far as I'll go with that. Just okay. some different base pairs. That's basically the code for what you're, whatever protein that you're building. Okay, so how does this vaccine work? Well, it's, it's a segment of messenger RNA that's about 1,200 amino acids long about it's a little bit more than that i think okay and so that means that there are 3600 uh of these sequences of a u g c c a g c u Mm. u blah 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 right 1200 long to make what is known as a spike protein spike spike protein that sounds fun that sounds like effective and powerful yes okay so (laughs) so you may have seen what uh the covid virus looks like and Mm -hmm. i'm gonna do my best artist interpretation Mm -hmm. so it's a big ball with a bunch of spikes on it okay those spikes are spike proteins Mm -hmm. and there's about 26 of them on the surface of COVID-19. And the spike protein is what COVID uses. So that, I just drew your cell membrane on the inside of your cell. I recognize um, it. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't, I'll just write it right there. <laughs> it's like France. It's like France. <laughs> it's France. It's fine. The spike protein is what COVID uses to attach its uh, its cell body to you, and then COVID has some messenger RNA on the inside of it that then is injected into your body, and then you start making the cellular mechanics of COVID. It makes so much in a cell that the cell bursts, and those new viral uh, units attach using the spike protein. Um, to others and that's how it spreads inside of your body okay so what i'm hearing as a history person is that this is a trojan horse situation no it's kind of like it's like you have they gotta they get in they the way they get in and attach is this thing and then they're carrying something else within it and once they get inside you're like haha it was a ruse yes okay and, and 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 this is how viruses work and there's there's a few different types of viruses some of them actually can implant into your DNA. Mm. Um, other ones are just mRNA, uh, mRNA viruses. Uh, okay. Like COVID is. 
And so now, how this vaccine works, they isolated these amino, this amino acid sequence to just make the spike protein. And so whenever you're vaccinated, you're vaccinated with the mRNA sequence that just makes the spike protein. There's no viral RNA, there's just the spike. Your body's immune system recognizes this spike as a foreign invader, as mm -hmm. not self. As a, as a, you have self and you have not self. And our immune system is really good at recognizing what is not self. So it instigates an immune response. And so your body has great memory. Even if you don't, your immune system does. Hmm. And so it, whenever you come in contact with COVID-19, it triggers the antibodies that get rid of spike protein, the not self. Hmm. Once you render the spike protein not working, the virus can no longer attach to your cell membrane. It can no longer implant your, its RNA, and you won't get infected with COVID-19. Huh, so it's like you're, okay, so the vaccine is basically training your body. Um, so with these like training exercises of like, okay, well, we're not actually going to shoot real guns. We're not actually going to do the whatever, but we're going to learn what to do when we see one. And so then if you do get COVID, this now is basically, it can't harm you anymore. It might be in your body and like, I don't know, floating around in there, but it can't attach to anything to infect you. Exactly. <gasps> the spike protein but vaccine enables your body to build the weaponry that renders COVID-19 useless against your cell membranes. So if I'm getting the vaccine, I'm not getting injected with COVID. Correct. Not, not this, not this type of okay. uh, vaccine. There are vaccines in the works mm -hmm. that are, as I've read anywhere from six to eight months to a year uh, where they may be uh, uh, available. And that would be um, more long-term a good thing, right? To, Cause to then recognize, or it does it not make a difference? Potentially. Okay. I mean, it, it's, one of the cool things about this type of vaccine, you probably heard that there are mutations to, uh, to COVID that are already kind of sweeping across the globe. Mm -hmm. um, all we have to do is look at the new spike protein that's being made from, if, if it is different, and so far it doesn't seem to be different, hmm. modify the vaccine for that new spike protein, we have a new virus, a new vaccine for the new, uh, for the new version. Huh. Okay. That makes complete sense. I, I legitimately, I really, like, I did not understand a lot of that. And I do now. And so... <laughs> There's, there's, and it's also important to remember yeah. this isn't brand new. Yeah. So we've had other SARS uh, outbreaks. Like, I, I believe this, the work on this vaccine began over a decade ago. Mm. And I know that many of, many of the people that I know that I've talked to about this have, have been very apprehensive because they're like, a vaccine's never been created this quickly before. Well, it hasn't been created that quickly. Mm. Um, we, they've developed this technology over a decade now. And so um, I think that it's, this is the first time, true enough, that it's been uh, mass produced. Um, and, you, you know, it's the first pandemic that we've been able to use it for. Yeah. So, um, but, but it isn't brand new. It isn't just something that scientists cooked up over the last year or so. Yeah, it's like um, it's they been had the all the technology. They had all that technology. And then they just needed the specifics of this virus to then apply kind of the final step to it. Right, they had to isolate that amino yeah. acid sequence. Mm -hmm. They had to manufacture it. And, and so, you know, it really is quite a feat of immunology, epidemiology to to have, to be able to have produced it that quickly um, because we have data analysis now that we can look into the genome of, of proteins and viruses and stuff. So, wow. but it's not new technology. That's awesome. Okay, so yeah, the big takeaways are herd immunity doesn't mean you can just sit back and assume everyone else is going to get vaccinated and keep you safe. The whole point is everyone who can get vaccinated needs to for it to work. The other takeaway is that as of right now, at least, you're not going and getting injected with COVID. You're getting injected with a thing to train your body to not let COVID in. And then the third is what we just talked about that I already forgot. 
oh, that it's not new, that this is, they've been working on this for a long time. Cause I'm, I'm with you. I've heard a lot of people are in my life expressing like, I don't know. I just, this seems really fast and I don't trust this, that like it hasn't gone through all the same procedures. It seems to me like they have, I mean, the process has gotten sped up in terms of getting approved by the CDC or the FDA or all that sort of stuff. But it's not like we've, it's not like this is the wild west and we're just like, well, let's just try it and see. Right. Right. Now, it, it is also important to point out that, so with traditional vaccines that we've studied, um, it also means that you don't carry the virus around with you to, to other people. What we don't know, because we didn't have enough time to make sure of in these clinical trials, is that if you are vaccinated, that just means that you won't get infected. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been any studies that... Um, determine whether or not it is still trans you can still be a vector for the virus um and that makes sense because if the vaccine you described right it's not it's not training your body to like kill or get rid of covid it's just making it it's like a barrier to where your body right. can't get infected by and it, so it should at the very least reduce the amount of time that it lingers in your body because there's nothing it's not replicating actively or as yeah. actively inside your body so at least it will do that but there hasn't been any long term because it hasn't been used long term. Yeah. Uh, to show whether or not, so you will still need to be masked up in, in social distance, but, but until we get to that herd, herd immunity that we were talking about. Okay. Yeah, that all makes sense. So the the other big takeaway is you can't get your two doses of the vaccine and then just go out Woo! like everything was before. Start snotting on everything. Yeah, Ugh. like go just make out Fine, with everyone in your life. <laughs> can't do that yet so yeah it's a lot of this is about compassion and again if you are on the side of death is bad which we both very controversially believe death is bad um then yeah you should get vaccinated if you can and you should continue to practice safe social distancing and masking but you can at least you know maybe go about your day with a little less apprehension but and that's yeah that's one of the main things that i'm looking forward to just yeah. that little bit of peace of mind because it's, it has been rather easy for me, for the most part, to, to just, like you're saying, like, I care about you. I'm going to wear a mask. I'm not going to, like, run right up on you in the grocery store and be like, oh, those Cheetos. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's hard. It's so hard to, I'm, I'm yeah. try <laughs> and that's what I really miss. That's right? what I really miss. It's just <laughs> accosting people about, is that, you, know, you do have a cheese snack in your hand? Mm. <laughs> um, it, but it's really important to remember that it is about compassion and but at least when it, whenever i get vaccinated i will have the peace of mind that like especially from here on out it's just a minor inconvenience for me mm -hmm. you know what i mean if i am at a lower risk of infection and all i know that i'm doing is making sure that no one else gets infected oh that's such a beautiful release for me because yeah. like i just get to be compassionate for other people and i have that safety for myself yeah totally totally thank you so much for joining and you um you also do a lot of other fun stuff you have a youtube channel that you're you're starting i started day before yesterday actually and uh it's just a it's a free yoga channel i i initially started for the school um i'm in the middle of getting my yoga certification from a online company called uh, 11 exhale yoga i i think it's samuel griffin yoga on oh. youtube yeah i'll put a link um, yeah, yeah. I, I have a few videos up right now. I'll expect to add a class or two every week. And uh, it's just there to it hopes that people, you know, take some deep breaths and strengthen their lungs. Probably good in a res respiratory disease mm -hmm. uh, pandemic and find a little bit of peace and happiness uh, in the comfort of their own home. That's awesome. Yeah. Samuel is our resident science teacher, one of our science teachers, yoga teacher, um, and just general cool dude. You're kind of generally understood as the coolest, the coolest one. You and Johnny, I think, fight over that. I would but. rather it be much more explicit than just generally thought of, but whatever. <laughs> we voted. <laughs> we had a vote. Yeah. Anytime I have other science uh, questions, thank you for having we'll be back. Yeah. Hopefully Let we won't have more that are as pressing as this. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I won't talk about us quite as much next time. Mm. Or maybe so. Maybe so. It's throughout history. It's the one thing we yeah. all can agree on, so.